السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى وبعد My dear viewers everywhere welcome to another episode in the series of history of Hajj We already learned that Allah the Almighty have mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran third chapter of the Quran ayah number 96 that the very first place of worship that he established on earth was the Kaaba in Mecca in which he said in awwala baytin wudi'a linnasi lalladhi bibakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil'alameen then in the following ayah he said fihi ayatun bayyinatun maqamu ibrahim in it in al-masjid al-haram are clear signs such as Maqamu Ibrahim. What is Maqamu Ibrahim? In Arabic, literally, the word Maqam means a standing place. Maqamu Ibrahim, then it means the place on which Ibrahim السلام, stood upon one day. What is it exactly? What is Maqamu Ibrahim? How does it look like? Well, the scholars have different opinions, even though most of these views are very weak. And there is only one valid view, but I would like to share with you what they discussed. Some said Maqamu Ibrahim means the entire haram because he stood everywhere in Al Masjid al Haram, especially while building the Kaaba. And others said Maqamu Ibrahim refers to the places of the Manasik, Mina, Muzdalifa, and Arafat. But the right view is the view of those who said Maqamu Ibrahim, which Allah the Almighty referred to in this ayah. Ayah number 97 of Surah Al-Imran and also Ayah number 125 of Surah Al-Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran, is the place upon which Ibrahim السلام, stood up while building the Kaaba. It's a stone. It is a stone which is like a cube. The height of this stone is 50 centimeters. Similarly, every side of it. What is it exactly? What is it made of? This stone, brothers and sisters, when Allah the Almighty uh, recorded in Surah Al-Baqarah in ayah number 127 how Ibrahim and Ismail used to build the Kaaba, he said, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ uh, Remember when Ibrahim and his son Ismail, both were raising the foundations of the Kaaba. In fact, one of them was building and the other was handing the bricks to him. Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was building the Kaaba. He used to put the bricks on top of each other, as we discussed earlier. And Ismail السلام, was in charge of collecting the bricks and the stones from all around the valley. And then when the building was getting higher, Ibrahim السلام, couldn't reach a higher level. So his son Ismail brought him this cube, this uh, stone, which is of a very special nature. It is Hajarun Rikh. It is like a flubby nature or kind of soft. So that, that's why when Ibrahim السلام, stood upon it, on top of it, while building the Kaaba and moving it from one corner to another, from building one uh, side to another, Eventually, it left, uh, you know, the marks of his feet against it because of its soft nature. The surface of uh, this kind of rock was soft, so it left the footprint against it. That's why Maqamu Ibrahim is that stone which have the remaining footprint of Ibrahim السلام, both his feet against it. The Meccans have also recognized the very special nature of Maqamu Ibrahim because they have maintained some of the heritage. Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, also said that Maqamu Ibrahim is also the stone upon which Ibrahim السلام, climbed in order to call Adhan, to call upon mankind to come to perform pilgrimage. When Allah the Almighty said, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Call upon mankind to come and perform Hajj. 
So Ibrahim alayhi salam complied by standing on this stone, which is also known as Maqam Ibrahim. When he finished building the Kaaba, the stone was adjacent to the wall of the Kaaba, particularly close to the door of the Kaaba. Then what happened? When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam conquered Mecca and he came to perform Hajj, he was passing by the Maqam, the stone. Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an was walking along with him. So he pointed to it and he said, Oh Umar, this is Maqam Ibrahim. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, shall we not pray here? So by the end of the day and before sunset, Allah the Almighty revealed the following ayah. Ayah number 125 of Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, in which Allah the Almighty said, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَاتَّقِدُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Which means, and when we made the house a pilgrimage for men, for people, and a place of security, and a point for yourselves, a place of prayer, on the standing place of Abraham. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended praying the sunnah of tawaf uh, behind Maqam Ibrahim, which was, as I mentioned earlier, adjacent to the Kaaba. Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, in the lengthy hadith describing Hajj, he said, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed his tawaf, he came behind Maqam Ibrahim and he kept it between himself and the Kaaba and he prayed two rakahs. They are known as sunnah al tawaf. It is recommended for every person who has performed tawaf, whether tawaf al qudum or tawaf for umrah or tawaf for hajj or even voluntary tawaf round the clock, even during the times which is disliked to offer in nawafil, it is recommended to pray these two rakahs which are known as sunnah al tawaf, where behind maqam Ibrahim. So you'll keep maqam Ibrahim as your sutra or in front of you. But nowadays we see Maqam Ibrahim distant from the Kaaba. Why? Historians have two different views in this regard in the narratives of the hadith. One view says that when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was commanded in the ayah, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Then he started praying the sunnah there behind Maqam Ibrahim and the companions followed him. It was kind of obstructing and slowing down the tawaf, people who are uh, revolving and circumambulating around the Kaaba. So he ordered the Hajar, the Maqam Ibrahim, to be moved away further from the Kaaba. So the distance between uh, Maqam Ibrahim and the Kaaba was approximately 10 meters. Then during the Khilafah of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an, there was a very powerful torrent and the surge, the water flushed the stone away from its place. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was very disturbed because he did not keep exactly the same place in which the Prophet sallallahu established Maqam Ibrahim. But luckily, one of the Meccan's people at this time said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I have kept that in mind and as a matter of fact, I measured it with a rope and I have the robe at home. So he brought it and he measured the same distance and as I said, it was approximately 10 meters. So they placed it in the same place and he was very pleased with that. Then the other view, it says, no, Rasulullah did not move it from its place. Rather, it was Umar ibn al-Khattab who suggested that after he became the Khalifa, and the number of Muslims were on the rise, and due to the large volume of the Hujjaj and Mu'tamirin, he suggested that we shall move the Maqam from its place further away from the Kaaba in order to give room for people who are performing Tawaf. As a matter of fact, in modern age, during the era of King Saud, the Saudi king, there were some views who suggested that the maqam should be moved even further away from the Kaaba 
because it was simply obstructing the path of people who are performing tawaf. And once he made the decision, one of the very prominent scholars sent a letter to him requesting him not to do so because it will be an innovation. And he listed a lot of evidences. And before executing the order, he again assembled the scholars and they discussed what this prominent scholar suggested and they all agreed. So he asked him, what shall we do? Because be before that, there was like a big umbrella on top of the maqam and people used to go and pray there and it was really, really obstructing the path of those who are performing tawaf. So he suggested that all of that should be reduced and we should just keep it in like a showcase, protected so that people would not get to touch it and people will not get to hang around it so much in addition to explaining to people that it is uh, a stone and it is not recommended to touch any stone other than the black stone corner and obviously Ar-Ruknul Yaman. He applauded that and they built this slow showcase on top of it which had been remodeled several times and now it is made so beautiful and is not taking much of uh, space. But also would like to alert those who are performing tawaf because the number now, not only on the rise, sometimes you have uh, hundreds of thousands of people are performing tawaf uh, in different levels of the haram. In the ground floor, sometimes it is packed. When people make a point to pray in this area, it becomes very difficult for them to keep focusing on their prayer and for people who are performing tawaf. That's why we recommend in order to give ease for others, you can skip praying in this place and pray anywhere else in the haram. Even if you leave the ground floor completely in order to make it easy and possible for those who are performing tawaf to complete their tawaf. The um, uh, Maqam Ibrahim alayhi salam had been taken care of by many caliphs and the first one to put like a, you know a building or a protection on top of it was the Abbasi caliph on the year 160 after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then years after years and leaders after leaders started taking care of Maqam Ibrahim and many other places uh, in, in, in the Kaaba in order to uh, take care of it. So brothers and sisters, Maqam Ibrahim, as Allah the Almighty stated in, um, in the ayah in the Quran, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى It is recommended to pray the sunnah, particularly sunnah to tawaf, after performing every tawaf behind Maqam Ibrahim. But if there is no room, you better pray the two rak'ahs anywhere else. Insha'Allah, in the future episodes, we'll learn some more about Al-Ayat, Al-Bayinat, which Allah the Almighty referred to in Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. قولوا قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته